we started talking about YouTube at YouTube started talking uh, about two years ago, maybe a little bit longer about coming to LA in a bigger way and having a presence here for our creators. And we started asking creators who were in LA what we could do to help them be more ambitious with their content. And one of the answers we got back in the early days was, if you could give me a soundstage, that would be great. That's the mode of production in LA. And it's not cheap to rent a soundstage. And when you're an entrepreneur, as many uh, YouTube channel creators are, you need all the help you can get to get things launched. So we said, let's make it another investment in our creators. Let's give them a place that um, they can have access to these advanced resources. We also knew that one of the most powerful ways to build audience on YouTube was through collaboration. And there wasn't a physical place that was on neutral ground where YouTubers could come together and work, and we wanted to provide that place for them. I guess to start, tell me a little bit about the building itself. Sure. Like... So it used to be a helicopter factory in the 50s and 60s. It was owned by Howard Hughes. It's 41,000 square feet. This is really like the heart of the space. It's where the community comes and hangs out. There's Wi-Fi, the lobby. Unlike pretty much any Google facility in the world, mm -hmm. you can just walk in here. Uh, behind us, you'll see we have a huge video wall. That's 36 HD monitors routed to 36 uh, Mac minis that can route one giant video or mm -hmm. up to, I think, 25,000 individual YouTube videos. Um, so if we go this way, this is stage two. Mm -hmm. It's a 2,500 square foot soundstage. Mm -hmm. Every month, we build a new set in it. Okay. And partners can use that set. This is our screening room. So it's 47 seats, 4K projector, mm -hmm. uh, Dolby 7.1 surround sound. The goal and why we did this is, A, it's really great for workshops. We do regular monthly workshops on the best practices of YouTube, but we also want partners to see their work on the big screen. So this is stage four, which is one of our smaller stages, and we've built ready sets, or what we call ready sets in here. And these are just basic, like here's a classroom, that this can be turned into an office, and then yeah. there's a late night set, and then there's a talk show set. And it just makes, again, as much as you can give people things that they can't do in their bedroom, that they can't right. get at right. home, and we're gonna be rotating these out constantly. Right. This is one of our green screens. We have three green screens in the space. And this is really just like, almost like what I call the workhorse room. Mm -hmm. It's like, just get in, make some videos. We have black curtains if you don't want to do green screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the, the most easy to use stage in our whole facility. So this is the big sound stage. 6,000 square feet, 22 feet to the grid, 360 degree catwalk. We've done video game high school in here. Machinima mm -hmm. was just in here shooting a bunch of stuff using the big green screen. It's really the kind of big epic stage that can cost tens of thousands of dollars to rent right, in Los right. Angeles. And basically, if you have a residency, they get to yeah. use this for yeah. free. They yeah. can just build out sets. So they build their own sets. They bring mm -hmm. in their own crew. We provide you the cameras mm -hmm. and the space. Okay. So cool. this is the back lot. So partners come to the front desk, they check in for the day, mm -hmm. they come back here to these guys and they get their camera, their audio, their light, any grip or gaff they need, and they go to their stages. So this oh, wow. is kind of where we keep all the stuff. So we try to get our partners to not only shoot here, but also do post-production. Okay. So we have a pretty big post-production infrastructure. Um, we have 10 iMacs that are kind of open edits, like more communal edits that people can book. And then we have 10 edits like this. So there's a Mac Pro, big screens and monitors. Mm -hmm. So then, here's our audio control. Lavo, the company that uh, makes this mixer as well as the other one in the other room, is really invested in kind of the YouTube space. And then finally, the production control. You know, you have to, when you build a facility like this, you have to future-proof. Right, right, and You have right. to be thinking, okay, they might start out there, but right. in a year, they'll be wanting to use they'll be this here. immediately. Yeah. Like yeah, as yeah. soon as they learn a new camera, they're like, great, I got it, let's go to the next one. Right, right, right. And so you have to constantly be ready for that. Yeah, I love working here. I love the space. Um, the people are very knowledgeable. Everybody that works here has this really great attitude and is very collaborative. And it's just, 
easy because it's a one-stop shop. You know, they have, it's kind of like a college situation where you have the cage where all the equipment is stored mm -hmm. and then you can just walk outside of that and you've got, you've got everything. You've got large, small, medium stages, you have green screens. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. And the when I was in high school, I went to an entire summer camp just for learning how to use equipment and film and I never realized that it would become this easy, this fast. Mm -hmm. It would be democratized this quickly, mm -hmm. that lights and cameras and the people who can help me use them are as simple to use as it was now. It's, it used to seem like a big barrier. Right. And now it's gone. The facility is open to any creator who has a channel on YouTube. That's the price of admission is that you have a channel on YouTube. And we have a series of different programs depending on your experience level on the platform. So. The first thing we wanted to do was send a message to the creative community that we support our creators and their development. And we really believe that the more high quality content we can get on the platform, the better. And we believe that we have a role to play in advancing the quality of content on the platform. We don't plan to build a lot of these facilities. We're building a few. We really wanted to seed the market. And because we believe that quality is tied to um, production techniques and collaboration and learnings. Uh, we wanted to show the way and show that creators would come together around a facility like this. It's funny how LA is developed as a center of gravity for YouTube creators. Several years ago, I would say that creators were more uh, dispersed than they are now, but this is obviously a place where there are a lot of prominent YouTube creators. So we knew we wanted to have a presence and frankly our flagship in Los Angeles because it's such a creative uh, hub.